I had a ton of useful comments in the last video, and to be fair, I always get really good comments, uh, so thank you all for that. But what we're going to do today, we're just going to jump straight into a few of these, and one I got there from Terracom Consulting. It says about how low fence will keep animals in, but allows villagers through. Now, this is a good timing, because I go actually just went back in from being over here. I thought this would be a good little area where we could test this out. So if we go on to fences, let's see, we're going to need, is it stick ones, and then low stick fence, or low wattle fence we could do. We could just do it along here, so let's put this like from here. I have to get really close. Let me make sure it gets right. Actually, it probably doesn't need to be that close to be fair, but um, for, for aesthetics, it will probably look better if it is. So we build it from there across to the other side here. Let's see how that's going to look. I mean, it's hard to tell, right? Uh, but let's try it out. So do I have the materials on me by chance? No, I need eight sticks. Okay, luckily, I just have to go over to here. And in fact, we can just grab some on the way. <laughs> There's three of them right there. Let me just get the rest. Somehow I have zero sticks in my storage, and I really have no idea how that could possibly be the case. I swear I had like hundreds in there. So that's something I'm going to need to investigate. But for now, we have just been able to walk around and collect enough sticks to build this thing right here. So let's do that. I want to see how it looks once it's built. And then also kind of just test it out and see whether or not it does work, as Terracom said. Sure that it will, but it's just good to know. Now, this probably doesn't look the best, right? In my opinion, this isn't like a nice looking thing. There are almost definitely better ways you could do it than what I've done here. Uh, but if it works, then that, that's all we're really testing. So if I walk up to this, do I just walk over? I do, so I don't even have to jump. So you can see how the villagers would easily get over this. And this is a really good way of testing, because right now all the animals are in here, but also uh, here, here she is, our worker's in here. This is our witter slower. So we'll check that she can get out. I'm sure she can, and we'll see if any of the animals get out or not. But if they don't, this might be an option for you and your worlds too. Put that low fence down there to keep animals in when uh, gates aren't as easy as an option. Now, I had a comment there, as you can see, from Jean-Philippe Moreau, and uh, basically saying about the buckets and scissors that I can bring to the pen in order to try things out. The scissors, I think, will not be uh, usable until we have uh, sheep, right? Like, full-grown sheep rather than just lambs. But the buckets will be interesting. And to be fair, uh, Jean-Philippe was not the only person who commented this. Uh, Sylvan Dryad commented here, Cora, Terracom Consulting, uh, so we, we, we had quite a few comments about the buckets, so thank you to everyone for that. What I'm going to do now is, is test this out on camera, uh, A, for a bit of fun, and B, just to show you guys how it works as well, in case you're wondering. So I'm going to go into town, see if I can buy the scissors. I should have buckets back at my uh, town. If not, I can make those up. They're easy to make. And then we'll give this like a little dummy run and see how that works. So we have here the bronze shearing scissors. I'm going to go ahead and buy one of those. So this is more something for later than for now. And as I'm doing that, I'm realizing I probably could have actually made these back at my town. I'll check that. But if you do want to buy them, obviously, you just Slower, the tool merchant in the uh, town of Piastovia, at least on the Oxbow map, that's where we're getting them from. We'll head back now, see what the situation is with buckets. Pretty sure we're going to have some of those, as I say, and also see whether or not I could have made up those shears. It didn't occur to me until I got to the town. I sort of forget how, uh, like what stage of the game I'm at. I'm a bit more late game than I think sometimes, but uh, yeah, anyway, we'll know for next time. Back at the anvil, we see here that the bronze uh, shears are actually really simple to make. We could have bought the scheme there for less than we bought the shears for. And with just one bronze bar, we can make up two shears. So definitely in the future, that's what we can do. Thought I'd mention it in case you're doing it uh, at home. It's just uh, a good thing to know. Let's go get some buckets now from our storage and see if we can milk the goats. So with buckets in my inventory, uh, the goats are asleep by the looks of it. But if we walk up to them, is there not a way that we can actually milk them? Hmm, let me see about this. Having just reread the comment, it says that we can collect the uh, resources from them once per season. And as you can see at the top of the screen, we are now coming to the end of a season. So I'm going to go and sleep and see if that makes a difference because we would have bought these goats uh, in this season. So maybe they, at the start of each season, you know, there's like stuff there you can go and collect. We're going to test that out. It might also be the case that they need a full season though. And in order for them to actually start producing milk, they need to have been here for a full season. So if that's the case, then it might be something we have to look at like at the end of the video. Uh, oh, look at this dude, Rudolph. He seemed, is he growing or is that just me? I don't know. Uh, either way, let's go and snooze to the new season and test this out. Now, I had a comment from Mongol Smashing, and I need to uh, talk to my wife here. So, her affection for me right now is 89%. It's not terrible. Mood 75%. That's pretty good. We do need to speak to them sometimes, though. Like, we can romance her uh, with, like, giving her gifts and stuff, but I don't have anything on me, so that's fine. Um, so, yeah, be well. Enjoy your life. Rudolph, hello. Um, same with him, right? His affection's really, really low. And we, we already knew that, uh, you know, from, from previous video. And we can buy him more toys and stuff. That's fine. Um, is she pregnant right now? Is that what that means? Hold on a second. Let me check this out. Okay, no, the, the green thing is pregnant. I was going to say, I thought I had to be part in the, like, has she been playing away? <laughs> like, I, I didn't say we we're going to have another baby, so I assumed we weren't. Uh, now, new season means a few things to check. We're going to start off by checking, obviously, the buckets and the goats and stuff. I'm just looking over there, though. 
Yeah, there does seem to be some change over at the orchard, which we planted a couple seasons ago now. So we'll check that out in a second too. But first, let's check out these goats and see if we're able to milk them or anything like that. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's happened. They're just lying here. Um, they don't say they can be milked or anything like that. So I'm not sure really what, what's going on there. It's something we'll just have to keep an eye on, I suppose. Now, in terms of management, I believe that the uh, if we go into the, the goat building, so animal husbandry, down to the fold, oh, excuse me, the fold is there. And we can produce here 0 0.27 milk per day. Now, they do have buckets available to them in the resource storage just over there, the, the worker does. So hopefully we will start getting buckets of milk uh, from her. But it's going to take a few days before we even get one bucket because it's uh, not much being produced there, as you can see. So here we go. Uh, there's definitely some things happening here. And these hot plants can be collected. Okay, that's really cool. So these apple trees and things like that, the trees here that we've planted are still growing. But it looks like everything else can be uh, collected. So let's do that real quick. So from one hot plant, if we collect this right here, Oh, we got 20 hops from that. That's pretty good. Let's actually look in our inventory. Let's see, hops are worth two coins each, but it's more about what you can actually do with them. Um, so it says you can craft alcoholic beverages at the brewing station in the tavern. Now, I'm wondering actually, how far are we off the tavern? Let's find that second. Yeah, we are very far off that, guys. The tavern here, you can see, is 10,000 points required. We don't have a 1,000 yet. <laughs> so, yeah, quite a long way off. We need to start producing more stuff and getting this all going up. Um, because there's some really cool stuff here, like the market store would be awesome. I cannot wait to be able to make one of those. We can make a really nice market area, um, and eventually the tavern would be really, really cool too. Everything else we're a bit ahead on, uh, although survival not great. But yeah, we're doing well on most things, but certainly production is something we need to look at. So maybe that's something I'll start to focus more on uh, now that we're getting to that stage. In the meantime, these hops, I'm guessing maybe we can use them for fertilizer. If we just throw them on the floor, they'll hopefully turn into rot, so we could do that. Uh, or we could just sell them, right? Um, we get you know, about a coin for each one. So at the moment, so in fact, let's do the full harvest and see how much we end up with. So we ended up with 300 uh, hops there. So about 300 coins worth, uh, which is pretty good, to be honest. It's basically just a passive income generator. Uh, so we, we could do that. We could just sell them. I'll have a little think. And what I'll do is I'll see if you guys uh, have any comments on useful things to do with them. Because I've never really been at the stage of this game where I've needed to do something with hops. You know, it's just not happened. So perhaps we'll, uh, we'll see what's said in the comments. But I'm thinking, yeah, probably either sell them or just turn them into fertilizer indirectly through uh, turning them into rot. It does say that the hops get stored in the food storage, uh, just noticed here. So I'm actually wondering whether or not they even will spoil and turn into rot. Uh, not sure about that, but uh, for now, we'll, we'll test that out and just chuck them in there. In a few days' time, I'm actually going away again for a few days' trip down to Margaret River in uh, Western Australia. So what I'm going to do is make a lot of content ahead of time again. So I just want to say, if you do any like comments and super chats, uh, super thanks, stuff like that, I will definitely shout them out. But there might be uh, an episode or a few episodes you know, later than it should be, just depending on when that happens to be. Talking of which, I want to say a big thank you to Derp, who once again gave another $10 super chat, uh, or super thanks, I should say. And this one actually came before the video even went live, which is kind of insane and quite funny. And uh, the reason is because he's also a channel member. So if you want to see all my content ahead of time, you can become a channel member from just $2 per month. And then you see all my videos uh, well, well in advance, basically. And a big thank you to everyone who is a channel member. And obviously, thank you to Dirt for the super thanks. And I just wanted to mention the fact that the content will be like planned and done a bit ahead of time. So that's why some things might be behind. But please do keep the comments coming in. I do very much appreciate them. And I do always read them all. The next project I'd like to get into is getting more people into the town. And I want them to look after the donkeys and the horses that we have in this area here. They can obviously feed them. They can get manure from them as well. And uh, it's just something that'd be nice to have a bit more automated. So I've been looking around. There are a couple of places around here we could put houses. So down here, for example, we could have some houses here along the river. That would look quite nice. But there's actually a nice little spot just here for our first person that I think we could do. If I go on to just a simple small house, then you'll see that we can just about get this one in here. I did find a little green spot just there. Let's get it back as far as we can. So it's close to the water. We we'll just place it there on the corner. So quite a nice location and a really nice commute there for the donkey workers. And then what we might do is build the others around here. So eventually we might need like two or three people. But for now, I think if we get, uh, see, we need three, right? We need one for the stables there, one for the stables there, and one for the donkey hut there. So technically we need three. We can get two in this house if we get a man and a woman. Um, so I think that's the first thing we'll do. And then this one over here, because this one is just about breeding. As soon as they become adults, we're going to sell them. We might take care of this one on our own for now. Then we only have to have one house. So we've built so many of these little houses on camera that I will just do this one in my own time now off camera. And uh, when we come back, we'll have a look at who we're actually going to hire to do the job of being the, uh, well, the donkey person. <laughs> Alrighty, here is the finished house, guys. Uh, you can see that I actually edited it a little bit so that the door to the house is down here. I thought by doing that, what we could do is over time, we could add a bit of a front yard to this house because this is pretty much just going to be wasted space that's down here by the river. 
Like, I can't see much being built in here, you know? So uh, we can do something with that. Uh, but this will be the house for the new horse person once we get them in. And talking of the horses, this one has escaped. We haven't put the little bit of uh, fence down here, so we might need to do that if we want to keep him in. I kind of like him wandering around the town, though. It's, it does give the town a bit of character, so I might actually just leave this for now. Um, but we, we've got options. So the next thing to do is to go off to the local campfire. We'll probably head to Astoria for that, as it is the closest town to us, and see if we can get somebody who's going to be herding horses. I guess that's farming skill, isn't it? That's what they're going to be doing, uh, the animal workers. So yeah, we'll see if we can find someone like that. And if we can find two, that's a man and a woman, then we'll get them both, and they can both live in there together. So let's see if we get lucky with that one or not. This is pretty crazy. I've actually not come across one of these before, but we can see here there is like a wagon that has tipped over right here. And uh, the poor horse seems to have uh, taken the brunt of it and is no longer with us, I guess. Uh, we can skin him, um, so waste not, want not. <laughs> we, uh, our sympathy didn't last too long there. We are going to skin him. And what do we get from that? 30 leather and 80 meat. My goodness, okay, that's interesting to know. So we've got these copper spears right here, which we just as well take those. And uh, let's see the chest right here. What's, oh, is it an empty chest? That's not so good. We do have this, though, a copper axe, which is good. Uh, what else? We've got some poisoned arrows. Very nice. And I know I say it every time, but I do always miss things when I'm doing this, so I'll probably be about to miss something. I'm sure someone will comment, but let's see if we can find anything else. Uh, looks like that might be it. Yeah, I believe that was it. I think we got everything out of that. I always like to do these on camera because I feel like they're kind of fun to, to watch, trying to see what we're going to get out of them. Um, but also, if I did happen to find like a few hundred coins and uh, I don't explain that on camera, it might look a little bit like, hold on, why does he have a few hundred extra coins? <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, off to a story. We're going to keep uh, going there now. Try and get in those horse breeders. Alrighty, let's go and have a look. So we've got these uh, villagers all here. And uh, let's see, so there's a couple guys, a couple girls. Actually, is there just the one guy? Alright, so we can hold down Alt to see their skill. His farming skill is unfortunately pretty terrible. Uh, there are ladies here. Do you know what? None of these are that great. They're only like a two at best. I'm, I'm actually going to leave it. We're going to go off to Piastovia instead. I'm not going to get anyone from there. Because they don't really fit with what we're looking for. So let's uh, mark that on our map. And head up that way. And uh, hopefully get a bit more luck. I'll see you guys there. Let's see uh, how we do. The campfire here at Piastovia doesn't look much better. There's only three people here, but it's their stats that will matter. So we've got a two there for her. And uh, both these guys are ones. So do you know what? I'm going to keep going, guys. Let's do it. We're on a roll. Uh, let's see. What town should we go to? Do we go to Skalki or do we go to Klonika? Do you know what? I'm feeling Skalki. I don't think Skalki's going to let us down. I also kind of like Skalki. I like going there, and it's been a little while. I feel like we used to go there a lot more when I lived. In fact, just over here, let's have a little visit. Uh, if you're new to the series, if, you, if this is your first episode watching, this right here is where it all started. This right here is the Tree of Beginnings, this tree just here. We built the road around, and uh, we've got Russell Crowe, who stands alone, but he was standing guard of our fields for a time. So uh, it's weird to think how much it's come on. It's been a great series, and I know I say this a lot, but it's because I really mean it. Thank you all so much for the support. Um, it really does mean a lot. It's been a really fun series to just be able to sit down and play and, you know, a lot of my content actually is so heavily edited compared to this. This is really just, I talk, and then, you know, when I'm doing the editing, it's like, oh, I stopped talking, I cut there. It's so different to some of the other stuff I do. Uh, so I really do appreciate the fact that you guys have been so supportive. So, yeah, I won't keep saying it, but um, <laughs> thank you very much for that. I'll see you guys over in Skalki. All right, there's the campfire. We're going pretty much as the crow flies here, which is a little dangerous sometimes. We can hurt our horse, but they do heal pretty quickly. Does seem to be a bit more lively this campfire. There's a few people around it. Oh, where am I going? There we are. Uh, although we do need to have a little drink just first. They've just seen this guy ride up on a horse, almost naked, uh, just jump in the river and then say, "Hey, I'm starting a town. Do you want to join?" I don't think we get much luck in real life, but we might do on this game. All right, so we've got a two for farming there, two there. Uh, she's a three. Okay, great. Now I'm going to talk to her, and if I do, I see small talk and tell me about your skills. So fishing and gathering are relaxing, yada, yada, right? That's what she said. Now, I've been told that if I keep asking them, they'll say different things. So let's try that again. Tell me about your skills. Okay, that one said the same. I might have been trolled. Let's see. Oh, no, here we go. I don't have much patience for pulling the weeds, but there is uh, no other way to help our crops flourish. Watching things grow makes me very sad. I mean, look, she, she seems into farming. Now, if I'm creating a settlement and you want to join... Okay, so we need 2,400 to get her. So let's have a look real quick here. I should have checked that first, but that's okay. Uh, let's go to management. Our current reputation is 2,210. So we're probably going to need to get to 2,600 in order to get two new people. So that is now the new goal. And the only way to do that is by taking on quests. Now, someone told me that if you go to the map and go to new quests, this was a comment. Apologies uh, to uh, whoever that was for not sort of remembering that. If we scroll in here, you'll see this icon, this exclamation mark, right? And there's a few of them dotted around the map for quests. 
Apparently, these give you a lot more dynasty reputation each time. So as we're in Skalki, and there's one just here, let's go down. This will be about talking to a person, which could be problematic because they might be sleeping. If so, I'll figure something out. But we're going to do a quest from the map like this and hopefully get a bit more reputation from it. All right, so this person's just here somewhere, I guess. Let's uh, have a little walk in. Looks like they're still going to be awake. So it must be this guy with a questing right next to him, right? So uh, we can talk to him. And actually, just show me your wares. What does he sell here? Okay, all this stuff. Interesting. Uh, I didn't know there was a guy who did this here. Anyway, uh, so can I help you with something? Um, I need one more to stay away from me, my family, and my house. That sounds serious. Okay, let's just go through this. It's a bit concerning. Um, yeah, that and then that. I, do you guys read these? Is it just me who skips through them? I don't know. Okay, so Neighbors Have the Differences is the name of the quest. And if we go down to this one right here... There we go, 300 reputation. That's going to be awesome. So our objective right now is to talk to Nazibor, good old Nazibor. Now, if I was a Nazibor, where would I be? Just realize what we need to do is actually set that, uh, we track it by pressing F, right? So if we do that, oh wait, is he is he 15 meters away? Wow, okay, that's awesome. Are you in here? Um, okay, are you, uh, hi Nazibor. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's so happy to be woken up and talk to you about this, uh, about like, you know, the problems he's going through with his neighbor. Um, so I've said what I've said. Uh, okay, so there's a new questing now. What we have to do, it says here. Okay, find five differences between wood, what Wodges, we'll just call them Wodge, Wodge and Nazi's houses, and report back to Wodgejet. Five differences between their houses and report back. Okay, this is going to take some time. So look, obviously this guy lives in here. This is Nazibor, right? So we need to look around his house, and then we need to come back and look around the other dude's house. But I might do this during the day, because it's going to be a little difficult to do it at night time. But that's the plan, so we can complete this quest and get lots of dynasty reputation. All right, guys, so we're about to complete this quest. So this is like a little heads up in case you don't want this quest uh, sport for you. But just before you do click forwards, I would say, like, don't do this quest. <laughs> it's really tedious and it's really not fun. So if you want the answers, grab a pen right now and you can just write down the number sequence that I'm about to go through. But yeah, this was really just not a good quest, and I don't recommend it uh, unless you're going to kind of just do it, like, I guess a little bit cheaty, right, by using my stuff. But anyway, let's talk to him, guys, and here are the answers. Okay, so the answers are number two, then number three, then number four, number four once again, number three, then number four, and finally number three. We say all that, he believes so, I'll talk to him again, yada yada. That quest now, I think, is almost complete. Let's have a look here. Uh, we have to talk to Nazibor. Okay, so that's the guy down here. And then I think we're done. But my goodness, guys. You can see, like, a full day has passed in game where I was just running back and forth. I took screenshots of all the stuff. And then, like, yeah, let's just talk to him. Um, whatever. I don't I don't care. I just want to complete this quest. All right, there we go. Oh, we have 300 extra thing. Yeah, really, really not the funnest of quests. So I'm just letting you know because you might not want to do that one yourselves. Um, however, we have now completed it, so we can get someone in to look after our horses, which was, after all, the point of all this. So let's go back. I don't even remember who she was now. I think it was a girl, wasn't it? And uh, she had, like, a level three. Do you know what? I think her name might have been Inga. If I remember that, then I've surprised myself because my memory is usually not great. And it is. This must be her. You know, I'm not even going to check. I'm creating a village. Come, come join. See you there. Boom. Uh, so let's do the management screen for her right now. Uh, management and go to the houses, and let's see here. So this one right here has got 100%, so we know that's the one, and her name is uh, Inga, so there we go. Let's uh, put you in there, accept, so she'll now be happy and be doing all that. The other thing we're gonna do is under the management screen, we're gonna go to the animal husbandry, so let's get rid of this second, and down to the stable. Now, they both say stable. This one here has got the stallion and the mare in, so I think this is the one we want the worker in most. So let's go and assign Inga, there we go into there. That's where she works. Okay, very good. Oh, that was a, that was a day, guys. That really was. But uh, at least you have the answers there. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, feel free to use them if you wish. Um, and if you did that quest uh, quest legit yourselves, let me know. Let me know how you got on with it. Maybe I just found it a lot harder than most. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of back and forth there. <laughs> Today is going to be a bit of a source out day. So what we're going to do is, if we start off with the management of the new donkey pen, then uh, if we go down to let's see here. Yeah, this stable right here with someone working in it. Um, I don't know that we're going to get any type of production out of this. There is no slot up here for the production, so I'm not entirely sure what happens with that. Um, let's have a look like with the pigsty, for example. Yeah, it's so like pigsty, we can say, like, we want the manure from it. The horses do produce manure, but uh, I'm not sure, like, there's nothing here happening. 
What I think might be the case is perhaps if we are a worker working in this area, the percentage chance that the horses breed, maybe that goes up. Because other than that, I'm not seeing anything. Um, we'll, I'll keep you posted on that one. The other thing is we've got these issues here with the workers where there's things that need to be uh, given to them. So uh, like we're getting these uh, notifications up in the top left of the screen, right? The four workers there. So I want to figure out what these are and try to fix those. Some of them might not be anything important, but some of them might be. So yeah, the sewing hut, for example, resources are needed there and resources are also needed over here at the smithy. So I'm going to take care of all this stuff, get through the day. And once I've done that, we'll sleep through and you'll see another new season will pass. And at that point, the goats would have been here for a whole season. So I want to see like uh, whether or not we can milk them at that point, which is basically where we came in at the start of the episode. So everything's kind of looped back pretty nicely there. And I'll be able to give you guys an update on the milking. So yeah, I'll do a few things off camera and catch up with you guys in the new season. I said earlier how I want to increase my production skills, because if we look here at the uh, production, we're on just about 900 points, which obviously is not very much. So what I'm going to do is I've got a load of, uh, let's see here, the oat grain in here. So we're going to grab all this out so we can make porridge from that with that and the wooden bowls that I've got here. So we're going to do that. Uh, let's just lighten the load a bit so we can actually move. And if we walk over here and just free up this uh, station a second, then we should be able to craft for up, let's see here, 166 porridges. Now it's going to take a little bit of time, about 10 seconds there. But uh, what we can do then is potentially sell them. I want to see how much they sell for, but it's going to help with our production skills too. Okay, so with that complete, let's see, we now have 33.3 well, just from crafting up those, so that's not too bad. And here is the porridge. It sells for 17 each, which if you divide that by two and sell all that, that's still quite a lot. And we have a ton of oat grain left, which I'm just going to chuck in here for now. Uh, actually, do we use oat grain for other things? Maybe it's used for the animal feed or something. Perhaps we'll keep that for now. What we do have as well is uh, this flaxseed right here. We've got thousands of that. So I'm going to go off now and I'm going to sell all this porridge. I'm going to sell all the flaxseed and basically spend my day doing that. So we're at 2,478 coins. Let's see when I've done all that, what we end up at at the end of the day. As the day and, of course, the season draws to a close, you can see here that the coins we have almost 14,000, which is fantastic. I believe that is the richest we have been. And that was all from selling all that stuff that you saw. Had to go to a couple... Oh, I thought we'd be able to sleep. Okay, not quite. Yeah, had to go to a couple of towns to do it. Um, we couldn't sell everything all in the one. But for the most part, things are looking pretty good. Now, I think what I want to do is, uh, once we sleep, is go and check on those uh, buckets of milk and see if they're available. And we'll also see if any of our animals have a baby. So that's the next thing you'll see on cam. I'm just going to wait until I'm actually able to sleep. Just a little thought, actually, before we do uh, go off to bed. But uh, as you can see, I'm dirty right now. And I thought it'd be kind of cool if they allowed you to come and wash over here at the waterfall. I mean, we're stood here engulfed by water, right? And we can do the same over on this side, but it doesn't actually clean us. I thought that'd be kind of nice because I'm actually struggling like there. I'm currently like completely underwater, right? I could I could drown here. <laughs> but uh, as I walk through, I'm not finding anywhere around here to clean myself. It's been one of the issues I've had. And I know that a few of you guys have made a town in this area. So are you finding the same? There are some places down river that we can go to, but they're just kind of far away if you're living where I'm living. So yeah, just a little random thought there before we head to bed. Let me know what you think about that one. Now, here we are in a new season and that season, guys, is winter. So we can't really go out dressed just like this, can we? So let's get all of our stuff back in now. Fur boots, fur hood, the joint hose, linen shirt, the thick gloves. All of that is going to be useful. And our cap with coif or whatever it is as well. So let's go ahead and put all of this on. And uh, our, our naked run of terror seems to be over uh, at this point, And we're back to being a normal, well, reasonably well-dressed at least person. And there's our boots to top it all off. So hopefully that's enough. Oh, sorry, sorry, Rudolph. Yep, go on out the door. Um, no wonder he doesn't like me that much. Come on, dude. All right, please, please walk out. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, okay, so let's go over. Let's check on the goats. Uh, do I have a bucket on me? I'll pick one up on the way. Our resource storage is nearby. And then we'll also see if there's any baby animals of any kind. Okay, so let's pick up a few buckets. There's five buckets there. I'm sure that'll be plenty. I think one might be too many. Uh, for some reason, I'm not that confident these goats are going to have made any milk just yet. Um, but let's see. Let's find out together. And actually, as we walk in, we can go like this. Oh, look at this. We have sheep now. Oh, and it says required scissors. Oh, we're going to test that out for sure. Uh, so this is the female goat. I'm not seeing any any option for milk. Like here, we've got required scissors. Oh, that is exciting. Okay, let me go get those scissors real quick. So bronze shearing scissors. Just take those there. And now we should get some wool, of course, from these sheep. Now, this is the first time I've ever done this, so I have absolutely no idea how much wool we might be getting, which is kind of fun. Let's see. Oh, now that's interesting because it told me I could like use them, but now that's gone. That's very strange. So... What we probably need to do then is let's equip them, right? So let's go ahead and equip you. And now, can I give you a trim? That's really strange. Okay, I wonder... Clearly I'm doing something wrong here. And maybe there is milk in this goat. 
And do you know what? Let's try something out. If I throw the bucket on the floor, all of them, would it now say required bucket when I look? Yes, it does. So it's like, okay, all right, that is odd. Let me try and figure this out. Okay, so interestingly, apparently they need to be out and about running around in the pen here for us to be able to milk them and also use the shears on them. So we're going to test that. We'll see if that is true or not. We'll wait until they're out and about and then we'll test it. In the meantime, what we're going to do is go and have a look and see if any of our other animals, our donkeys or pigs, have done any breeding as it is a new season. So there is always a chance. And if so, then we'll have some babies. Let's see. Okay, pigs are first. And here we go. He's just coming out first thing in the morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Pig. Oh, and yes, we do. We have a couple of piglets right here, which is awesome because uh, once these grow up to be big and strong, we can either slaughter them and take their goodies and that'll be uh, either profitable or stuff we can use for our town in terms of like food and stuff um, or we can sell them right that's the other option but uh, you know obviously much more fun to kill animals than to sell them uh, I'm joking of course actually quite a huge animal lover in real life so uh, yeah before anyone gets too upset with that one just a joke now in terms of the horses are there any baby horses around here I don't think so is there oh oh no there's a donkey <laughs> <laughs> that is a donkey, not a baby horse. Um, okay, so I think we're all good on the horse front. And I'm assuming that our other horse will not have grown up yet. I don't think enough time has passed. Uh, we can check in on him just through here. Should be out the back. Yep, there he is. So uh, not grown up just yet, and I wouldn't have expected him to. But at least the pigs have been getting busy. We're, we're getting some sort of progress as we go. Let's go back to the sheep and the goats now, see if they're out and about in the pen. If that's all it is and they just need to be out in the open, that is awesome. Um, for some reason, I just, I don't know, you know when you get a feeling something is, is not going to work? Let's see, I hope I'm wrong. Alrighty, everybody is now out in the pen. Hello to you all. Uh, so, yeah, like, it doesn't seem that I can actually do anything with this, right? I can't seem to shear them. I mean, unless, maybe she's beaten me to it because she works here. Oh, if I hold down E, I can milk the female goat. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, this is the uh, animation. Just us looking at the butt of the goat. Okay, now you're now milked, and I guess I can't milk you till the next season. As for you, you're a male, so uh, yeah, trying to milk him would be a very different thing altogether. Moving swiftly on, <laughs> we have the sheep here. Uh, it doesn't seem we can do anything with these. I wonder if there's going to be a load of wool over in our storage now. Maybe she beat us to it, and that's why we're not able to, but I don't know. That seems kind of odd. Yeah, okay, I did not see any wool in our storage, so uh, a little confused about what's going on here. I'm going to keep trying to figure this out, and we'll see how we go. Well, guys, this really is an odd one. Um, the fact that the sheep said it could be sheared and then is now outside of the fold, there's no reason uh, that I can find that it shouldn't be sheared. The only thing I can think is that maybe she has done it, but uh, I thought it'd be more like manure, where she would produce wool from the sheep. And in fact, you know what? I don't think she's even set to this uh, before I even go down the route that I was about to. If we go into Animal Husbandry and we look at the foals production, I don't think wool... Yeah, it's not even set to anything. Um, it could be. Like we, could, we could start doing that, could we? The, she would need scissors, which is fine. We could do that. But it's just set to buckets of milk right now, so she shouldn't even be shearing them. So, yeah, I might just have to wait and see if you guys comment on this one. Maybe the, the wool will grow back. Um, but that is that is a very odd one. Maybe I was supposed to shear them at the end of last season, and because they were still in the fold, perhaps that's what it is. Maybe it thought it was still the end of last season, and so, you know, the, the shearing was there ready to be done. But now it's a new season, and it sets it back to zero, and maybe it grows over the course of the season. We'll keep an eye on it. I'll, I'll keep you updated in the next episode. If anyone does know the answer and they comment that, then I'll let you guys know in the next episode. But apologies for uh, not being able to figure this one out. I did try some Googling and stuff, but uh, yeah, I wasn't able to find it. What we are able to do, though, is uh, let's go to the kitchen and see what we can do with our new milk. Okay, look at this. So we can make a uh, quark, uh, which is just a bucket of soured milk. Oh, we don't have any of those, though. Um, and then we can turn that into cheese eventually as well. So that's the things that we can do with milk. So how do we get the soured milk, I wonder? Let's see about that one. Okay, so to get some soured milk, we just have to store milk somewhere that's not like in the food storage and stuff like that, and it will do it at the end of the season. So what I'm going to do is our bucket of milk right here. Let's go chuck that down on the floor just like that, and we'll leave it right there, and that should sour, and then we'll do that in the next season, which will probably now be done in the next episode. So actually quite a bit to do in the next episode. Let's see, this is my hook to keep you guys watching. Uh, now, in terms of the uh, shearing of the sheep, I'm not sure that we'll have the comments through by then because I'm probably going to make this episode in advance. But we'll see what we can do on that. For now, though, guys, I just want to say thank you, as always, so much for watching and for all your support through this series. And I look forward to seeing you all in the very next episode.